Have you ever dated somebody and felt like everything was going incredibly well? The chemistry was there, the connection was on point, everything mentally, emotionally was really clicking into place and the physical chemistry was really strong. And yet time passed and more time passed and they never seemed to really evolve or escalate the relationship with you. Despite you being ready and even making it abundantly clear that you were ready to do that with them. Well, what does it mean when that happens? Does it mean that you're not actually their type? Or perhaps that they're just an avoidant attachment style? There's one very specific way to find out. And in today's video, we are going to talk about what a securely attached person would do and how they would react to somebody who won't commit. And my hope is for you that by the end of this video, you know exactly what steps to take if you're in this predicament so that you can evolve the relationship or find out whether or not this is even worth investing your time in. So first and foremost, one of the most important things to address is that in that dating stage of relationships, that very first stage where we're getting to know somebody, each attachment style has a unique timeline that they generally tend to expect somebody to make a commitment along. So a, a, a securely attached person has a different set of ideas about how long between meeting somebody and then like really committing to a relationship that framework should be versus an anxious preoccupied person, for example. So generally for APs, APs are ready to like be in a committed relationship around like sometimes as early as the two week mark. And usually that range starts to sort of up the ante in terms of the pressure. Um, the AP feels a lot more like pressure to commit around like four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, like right around that time, APs are really ready to commit. Now, if you look at a dismissive avoidant, dismissive avoidance, their general timeline to which they make a commitment often is like three to six months, um, tends to be the range. So at two months, like that eight week period for APs, they're not even anywhere near being ready for that. So you can see right away in the early dating stage, just how complicated that will make things, let alone that they have a totally different set of subconscious rules and ideas about how to give and receive love to, to one another. So with that being said, you know, a securely attached person actually tends to share a similar timeline um, of expectations to a fearful avoidant person. And this tends to be between two and a half in the early stages to about three to four months. Um, so that sort of range. And again, please keep in mind, this range will be dependent on a whole bunch of other factors. Like it's not so cut and dry because are you friends first before you start dating? Um, do you see each other every day? Do you work in the same place? Are you long distance? Like all of those things will have a very different impact, but as a general rule, the types of patterns I would see the most securely attached people are usually waiting for the first two and a half months to really vet somebody. And that may be the time that they're ready to, to make a commitment. Usually around the three month mark is more accurate, but it can stretch as long to as long to as being four months as long as being four months, you can stretch up to four months. Um, and we'll usually see that kind of time to properly vet a partner. So when we then pair that up with a dismissive avoidant individual, and keep in mind too, like I know I mentioned the FA timeline, the FA has that three to four month timeline for different reasons, right? Like they may share that same timeline, but it's often because the FA is kind of going from their anxious to their avoidant side and constantly has this like mixed set of feelings about how to commit or whether or not to commit. Um, whereas the securely attached person is usually taking the appropriate amount of time to just vet, to ask the right questions, to really establish like, is this the right relationship for me? And I'm, am I the right person for this relationship? And, and they're usually really getting to know somebody in intentionally with finding out that information um, as being the goal. So then when we have a dismissive avoidant, right, they're looking like four to six months. Um, and so let's say, for example, that we have somebody who's more intensively DA, like a more intense dismissive avoidant and somebody who's, you know, secure with like a little bit of anxious preoccupied in there. So let's say they're secure. They're ready to, to really date um, around the, or to commit to a relationship around the three month mark. Okay. Let's say even like two and a half month mark. And let's say our more extreme DA is looking at around six months. What would the securely attached person do in that situation? How would they approach the conversation? 
Well, the securely attached person, first and foremost, would recognize that not everybody follows the same expectations as they do, right? Everybody has different timelines. Everybody has different needs. They have different expectations. So while they wouldn't dismiss their own needs, they would be able to hold what their needs are, but also hold empathy, understanding, and awareness for the fact that somebody else probably moves at a different pace than they do because they have a unique background and upbringing and set of expectations for how they do relationships. And the, the securely attached person would not be taking that personally, right? They're not like, oh, I'm not good enough or um, you know, they're doing something bad behind my back and that's why they won't commit. They don't rush to make these assumptions. Instead, they tend to be more approach oriented in their behavior and try to ask questions rather than make assumptions and kind of get to the bottom of things. Now, the way that a securely attached person might approach the situation is first to let the person know how they are feeling, right? And it's interesting because we'll see like a fearful avoidant. Usually we'll just hold things in. Um, anxious preoccupants can also sometimes hold back and not say too much because they're afraid of pushing that person away. So as a way to maintain more closeness, they kind of silence their needs and go into people pleasing the other person's needs. But generally for anxious preoccupants, we'll see that kind of come out more in different ways. So a securely attached person would approach with this missive avoidance and say, hey, look, I've really been enjoying getting, enjoying getting to know you. I've had a great time these past few months. And I'm definitely in a place where I could see this being something and going somewhere. And so while I'm not saying that ha this has to be this immediate decision, I'm letting you know that I definitely want a commitment longer term. That's the path I see this taking. But I also value and care about my own time. And so I don't want to be investing with that intention in mind for the future if you're not on the same page. So what I am needing from you is a confirmation that you see this also moving in that type of direction long term. So do you see like, so that sounds very formal, like obviously I'm speaking very formally, you would put that into the words of like how you're actually going to have a conversation with your loved one, but they would be really clear. They would say, I've arrived at a conclusion, right? I, I can see this going somewhere. Um, I also care about my own time. I'm not asking you to make a decision right now that we have to be exclusive this moment. I'm okay with you having a slightly different timeline, but I need to know that directionally you're moving in that space and that within the next you know period of time, you're going to see that this can be a good place for us to go to. So they're, they're looking out, the securely attached person is looking out for their needs. They're supporting their frame of reference for like what their intentions are in the relationship. They feel fully confident in expressing that and they're able to hold the other person's point of view and kind of empathize with somebody being different than they are and maybe being slower moving, maybe needing more time to make commitments, but making a stance, right? They're, they're being able to communicate, show up, back themselves, say, this is what I'm looking for. And I value my own time. So if you're not also moving in that direction, tell me, because then I can make a decision according to that information. So there's no like, what are we that kind of pops out of the blue? There's no like, hey, I need to know something right now. Are you making a commitment or not? There is no like immediate pressure, which we know is first of all going to push the dismissal avoidant in the totally opposite direction. Um, and on top of that, there's not like a people pleasing where they're unwilling to communicate what their stance is and what they're needing and then just resent it, re resent the person later on. They're also not willing to get caught in the gray area forever. And they're also not willing um, to put themselves in a position where they're going to try to not, you know, try to play it cool, let's say. And then, you know, that pressure is going to come out in different ways, right? These indirect ways, which ultimately just makes somebody feel so much more pressured. Um, so that's that part. Now, what would the securely attached person then do? If their, their person they're dating was like not responding to that type of conversation or didn't give a good answer to that situation, right? Like what would they then do at that point? So I'll tell you, but I also want to let you know that if you are um, dating somebody of a different attachment style than you, it can be complicated. Like we can literally feel like, oh my goodness, <laughs> how do I make sense of this whole situation? Because an attachment style is like a subconscious set of rules you have about love. And when people have a different set of rules, it's like playing a board game with a different rule book for how the, the board game works. It's just going to result in a lot of unnecessary confusion and friction. So if you are looking for a roadmap to either first understand yourself, your attachment style, and like what your rules are across the six stages of relationships, we have these really in-depth roadmaps and they're for every attachment style. 
how the fearful avoidant shows up in the six stages of relationships. So the dating stage, the honeymoon stage, the power struggle, the stability, et cetera, commitment, bliss stages. So um, we have a roadmap for every attachment cell. You can download that roadmap for free for seven days. You can go through the whole, it's like a course with all the things that are going to come up for every single style, um, all the pain points, the fears, the challenges, the wounds, um, the insecurities, the timelines, each attachment style expects to have. And it's about two hours long. So you can go through the whole thing, download the roadmap and the rule book that they have um, and the exercises to work through those things for any attachment style. And again, I'll put that link down below and you can check it out for free for seven days. Now, um, when we look at this different dynamic, right? And the securely attached person goes into having this conversation. They brought that up to the dismissive avoidant. And let's say in response, the dismissive avoidant is like, I don't know what I want. Or they're like, you know what, maybe, but I don't know. Or let's say they say, yes, I am on the same page, but then all this time passes and the needle hasn't moved. The securely attached person would then follow up with more clarity, more specificity, and then with backing themselves a, a step further. So in that next case or conversation, they might say, and even if it's in the same conversation, totally fine. If you don't know, I very much understand that we have different timelines and, and ideas about how long things should take to draw those conclusions. I do also want to let you know that I really value my time and I really care about like where I'm investing it. So I'll give you some time and space to sort that out, to figure that out. But if I don't see something that looks like it's a progression and it's substantial within the next couple of months or the next few weeks or insert your kind of timeline that seems relevant, ideally don't tell somebody like, within 24 hours. Like you don't want it to seem like an ultimatum. You want to give space and time for somebody to figure it out. But you would say, if I don't see progression in the next little while, then I will, you know, follow up with you. And if we haven't been able to make a decision together to progress, then I will have to just take a step back because I'm looking for somebody who's ready to commit in a relationship. And that that's valuable to me. And that's important to me for where I'm at right now. And so there's not like a threat, right? There's no like, if you don't make a decision, I'm out of here. There's no threat, but there is like showing that person that there's a natural consequence for them not showing up, right? And it's healthy. This is how we back ourselves. This is how we have boundaries. This, this is how we like show up and communicate in a healthy way. And it's showing that there's these natural consequences. Like if you're not ready to move the needle and that's what I want. And that's where my time, like that's my timeline that I'm looking for a commitment within. And I don't see any progression. Then like for me, I don't want to be with somebody who's not willing to have that kind of progression. Now, don't say it like that, right? Say it like how I said it a minute ago and using the kind of like script I gave you. But um, that's you fully backing yourself. The vast majority of time when I would work with clients on these types of things and they would have those conversations, DAs would respond very well to those sorts of things because there's no immediate pressure. There's no ultimatum, but there is like this self-respect. There is like, hey, I know what I want. I'm clear. And I'm here to back myself and my standards and that's it. And, and jump on board or don't jump on board. I really enjoy spending time with you. I really like you, but if you're not ready and you're not willing to make a commitment, I'm also not going to get stuck in this gray area with you because I'm clear about my boundaries. So it just, it, it, it's this healthy kind of win-win. And at the end of the day, I know it can be scary to have those conversations, especially if you're a little bit more anxious leaning, but in having those conversations, that's how we see the transformation. And that's also how you become more secure because you're backing yourself in the experience, right? You're sure of what you want. You've got your standards. You're not willing to kind of just tiptoe around or get stuck in this gray area for so long. And you're showing people how you want to be treated. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this is helpful. I will definitely do a follow-up video um, about this for the fearful avoidant version. And let me know any other questions you have down in the comments below, especially if there's things that you want to know, like how would a secure person X, Y, Z, like, let me know what you're curious about from that perspective. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this channel, please consider liking, subscribing, um, sharing this video, and I will see you in future videos.